Hi everyone, it's Esther here. I hope you're having a great day. Um, today I just want to talk about my recent experience with getting a DEXA scan. It's actually the very first time that I've gotten a DEXA scan and you know I just kind of wanted to go over my experience as well as my results. I'm just going to jump right into it. So first I just want to talk about why I decided to get a DEXA scan. Really, um, the reason why people get DEXA scans is for two main reasons. One is to get your bone, bone mineral density or your bone density percentage. And the other one is to get your body fat percentage. Now, the main reason for me is I wanted to check my body fat percentage. If you've watched some of my recent videos, you know that I'm just kind of restarting my fitness journey. I got off track for a while. And so my body fat percentage is definitely higher than what I'm used to. So I wanted to you know, really get an accurate um, depiction of what it looks like right now. Now, I was considering just doing the skin fold caliper because I have one at home, but the problem I have with that is it really only tests your subcut subcutaneous fat, which is like the fat that kind of lies underneath your skin. So with the skin fold caliper, that's why you're doing the pinching like under your arm and at your waist and et cetera. But it's not really getting a accurate picture of your overall body fat um, as well as your visceral body fat which is the body fat that's um, kind of considered the bad body fat that can sit around your organs and things like that so i just wanted to be as accurate as possible and i kind of did some searches online and i found that the university of hawaii um, cancer center here does them for a little over 70 dollars, and i thought that was reasonable and i just thought why not let's do it so basically what happened is I went into the University of Hawaii Cancer Center and when I got there, I just had to fill out some basic paperwork and then they took my height and my weight, uh, which I'll go over that when I get into my results. And then after that, I went into this other room where they had the DEXA scanner. And basically what they had me do was lay down on, it's like a table. So it has the table and the table moves and then the scanner is above it. So I laid down on the table and then the lady administering the scan, um, she basically just positioned my body how she wanted me to be. So she kind of like pointed my elbows out and she actually taped my fingers down so that they wouldn't move. And then um, she had my feet kind of pointed inward and she taped those down a little bit too because I guess they don't want you moving too much because it could affect the results. So once she did that, she started the scan. It literally took about five minutes. Um, and basically what they do is they use x-rays in order to scan your entire body um, and get all the body fat percentage and lean mass and et cetera. So we did that. Um, I didn't get my results right away, but they did email them to me. I want to say it was either that day or the day after, but it was pretty quick. So when they emailed the, me the results, they gave me two documents. One is like my actual results and the other one is some notes kind of explaining the results. Now it is a lot of information and it'll probably get really boring if I go over all of it with you. So I'm just kind of gonna go over the things that jumped out at me. Um, so at the top, it gives my height and weight in centimeters and kilograms, which we don't really use that in the US. So I did convert it but my height is 165.2 centimeters, which is five foot four inches. My weight is 59.6 kilograms, and that equates to about 131.4 pounds. Um, I'm 39 years old, if you guys didn't know. And they did put my ethnicity as white. I'm actually half Korean, half white, but they, I guess they don't have mixed in there, so they had to pick one, so they just picked white. And then basically on the first page, the first thing that I found interesting is they um, look at your BMC in grams. And so basically what that stands for is your bone mineral content. And it says typical BMC ranges are 1.5 to 2.5 kilograms for a woman and 2.5 to 3.5 kilograms for a man. So mine is 2.05 kilograms. So it's in the normal range. And then on the next page, it really gets into kind of what I was most interested in, and that's my body fat percentage. So it's kind of interesting because it breaks it down by body part as well as your overall body fat percentage. So, you know, I found it really interesting that 
like my arms and my legs have a lot more fat than my trunk. Okay, so um, my total body fat percentage is 23.1. I did pull up a chart. So basically I had to look online because there was nothing on these results that was talking about what's normal for body fat percentages. So the first thing that came up, this is from healthline.com and you'll find a lot of different charts, but they all kind of say around the same thing. But this one, it says percentage body fat for athletes, 14 to 20%. For um, someone that's fit, it's 21 to 24%. Acceptable, 25 to 31%. And obese is anything above that. My body fat percentage, it's 23.1. So that's in their fitness range, which I, I guess is more like the normal range. Um, I do want to point out, though, even though it's normal, it is high for me. The last time I did like a really, one of the more accurate body fat tests, I did a bod pod. And I want to say... It was, it was like definitely over five years ago, but I was under 20%. So just to put that into context, but I'm in a healthy range, so that's good. Now, if I kind of look at the breakdown of body part, my left arm is 27.1% fat and my right arm is 24.5% fat. Those numbers really surprised me because um, I'm actually left-handed. So I thought the dominant arm would be a lower fat percentage, but it's not. <laughs> my trunk is 19.4%. My left leg is 28.6 and my right leg is 27.1%. My head is 19.3. So I guess I have a lean head or something. <laughs> and then what they do is they, they do Android versus gynoid percentage. So Android is like your upper half of your body and gynoid is your lower half of the body. So um, my upper body is 21%. My gynoid is 28.2%. So I definitely store more fat in the lower parts of my body, which is pretty typical for a female in my age range. My BMI, it's showing normal. Who uses BMI anymore? And then they have this YN versus AM score. So I found this kind of interesting. It basically compares your results with other people in the population. So the YN means young normal, and it's comparing your body fat percentage to someone of about 24 to 26 years old from the NHANES data set. And then AM means age matched. So it's comparing your results with someone of the same age, sex, and ethnicity. So that's kind of the more relevant, more meaningful um, score of the two. I have an AM of five. So basically what that means is 5% of the subjects in the NHANES data set that are the same age, sex, and ethnicity as me have the same or lower body fat percentage, so 5%, and then my YN is 10%. And then the last thing that you know I think is really interesting and, and important, it's called your visceral adipose tissue. So basically that's measuring the um, visceral fat. So that's the fat that surrounds your inter internal organs. Uh, it says like your liver, heart, and lungs. So that's the one that's associated with metabolic diseases like diabetes and heart disease. So, you know, it kind of gives you a threshold here. It says, um, and they look at your VAT area centimeters squared. So if it's 10 to 100, that's normal range. If it's 100 to 160, that means you have um, increased risk of those metabolic diseases. And then if you're 160 to 300, you're at high risk. So mine is 22.8. So luckily I'm in the normal range there, but that's kind of it as far as my results. Now, basically what I'm gonna be doing with this as I kind of move along in my fitness journey, I want to compare these results now to what my results will be later on. So I'm really just using this to track my fitness um, progress and my goals. And I'm hoping to lower my overall body fat percentage. If I kept it like it, like it is now, it's fine and it's healthy. But I also know that my results now are the result of about one year straight of not being consistent with my exercising and eating a really, really bad diet. I want to see what my results are after following the consistent fitness routine, as well as a healthy diet. So I talk about this more in my previous videos, 
but basically what I'm doing right now for my exercise routine is predominantly at home Pilates or Pilates inspired type workouts. And I will be tracking all of that and sharing my results with, with that as I move along. And I am eating in a calorie deficit with a focus on adequate protein and not really on any specific diet. Like a lot of you guys know me as doing the keto diet before, but I've kind of put that to the side for now, but that's it. So, you know, if you want to see my results and you're interested, please subscribe to my channel because I will be sharing those as I move along. If you found this video helpful or interesting, please give me a thumbs up and I will see you all next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye everyone.